As I was recently working through designing my most recent video, I came across a problem that I knew could be solved dynamically and with code. I was working with Manim, a mathematic animation library built in Python that lets you animate and visualize mathematical ideas. You can visualize shapes and different transformations with ease. And I, what I wanted to do was dynamically display NumPy arrays and animate them. I wanted the code to generate the proper visualization regardless of the shape and size of the array. So to do this, I needed to figure out a way to tie what I knew about NumPy arrays into what was possible with Manim. Fortunately, one of the animation objects in Manim is the rectangle. The main parameters being the height, the width, the grid x step, and the y, grid y x step in the grid y step. These parameters line up quite nicely with the parameters of a numpy array and by the looks of things we should be able to use this to generate our different animations. So let's go ahead and code up a simple rectangle to get a sense of how they behave when when they're created. Here um, we'll start with a simple one by one rectangle uh, which ends up giving us a one by one square. So we go ahead and define our matrix class we're inheriting, inheriting from the scene object in Manim um, we're going to go ahead and define the construct function, and then we're going to go ahead and create a rectangle object with a height of 1 and a width of 1. We're then going to go ahead and add that to the screen and then run things. Let's start adjusting some of the parameters to see what they look like and get an idea of how things change. So we're going to go ahead and adjust the width to 5 and then go ahead and set the grid x step. We can see that we now have an array with one row and five columns. Perfect. So let's go ahead and tie this into the numpy array and its different parameters. So numpy arrays have a method we can call to get their shape. The zeroth index of the array shape is the number of rows and the first index is the number of columns. The manim rectangle has two grid parameters, grid x step and grid y step. Underneath the hood, Manib splits the screen up into animation squares that default to one animation unit. If we want our grid squares to show up smaller on the screen, we can scale our display size with these grid settings. In order to dynamically determine the height and width of our Manib rectangle based on our NumPy array, we'll take the array shape and scale it by our desired rectangle grid step, as we see here. The next part of the problem is figuring out how to display numbers inside the grid. With a quick Google search, we're going to go ahead and try to figure out, and it looks like that we can go ahead and tie text into a rectangle using what's called a V group. So let's go ahead and take the same concept and pull it into our code. So we'll go ahead and create a V group object and assign it to a variable, and then generate some text and call the text method move to and pass our rectangle object so the text moves to the rectangle. We'll go ahead and now add our rectangle object as well as our text object to the V group, and then we'll go ahead and display that. Perfect. We can see here the text moved to the rectangle and actually de actually defaults to aligning to the object center. This is important to note because when we want to align the text to the other grid squares, we'll need to incorporate some offsets. Also, this array is made up of five columns, which is an odd number, meaning there is a central square. When we are dealing with an array with an even number of cells, there isn't a central square, meaning the text will not line up as easily and we'll need to incorporate even more complex offsets to get the proper alignment. As you can see in this example with an even number of rows, it splits between the two grids. So we're going to go ahead and have to write separate code for, code for that, but first we'll focus on the easier case, the odds. All right, the most important thing is to find a pattern. So let's go through this one step at a time. 
going from odd to odd, let's write out the rectangle offsets that will be needed um, depending on the length of the odd array. So starting with one, uh, we'll need zero offsets because the text lines up in the center of the object. Three is going to be negative one to one. Five is going to be negative two to two. Seven is going to be negative three to three and going to continue on and so forth. So are you starting to see the pattern? What, what is exactly is the pattern here? So we're going to need to be able to generate the maximum offset value based on the odd number that we get. So if we take a look at it, go ahead and take a look that we start to see one is zero, three, the maximum offset is one, five, the maximum offset is two. We're going to go incrementally, right? So if we take a look, one is the zeroth odd, which gives us our offset. Three is the first odd, which gives us our offset. Five is the second odd, giving our offset. So when we're given an odd number, we just need to generate a list of all the previous numbers, all the previous odd numbers, count how many there are, and that'll tell us our maximum offset value. So if we start with seven, there's three odd numbers before seven, meaning three is going to be our maximum offset value and so forth. Let's go ahead and generate this list in Python. Now that we have the list, we just need to find out what the index is of the odd number we are looking for to get our maximum offset value. So let's go ahead and index that list. If we take a look, our NumPy array has five columns, so we should expect to get back two. And there we have two. So let's take a look back at the original setup we had, and you can see that we have five and we also have two, just like we needed. The beauty of figuring this out for the columns is the solution is the same for the rows, except reversed, since the man and row indexing starts at a positive value and goes to a negative. So we just have to flip the signs in order to get the exact same list, but for the rows. Now that we have figured out the row and column solutions for all odd, odd length arrays, I went ahead and just wrapped that logic into some functions so we can call them later and won't have to constantly rewrite it each time we need to use it. Let's now connect the Manib logic to our NumPy array by iterating, iterating through the array as well as the Manib indices to write out an array to the screen.
we're going to go ahead and shift the text by the indices and here we have it we have all of the column indices working properly for a array of five as well as the row indices let's go back and work out a solution for the evens so two is going to be from negative five to 0 0.5 four is negative 1.5 to 1.5 6 is going to be negative 2.5 to 2.5. And then 8 is going to be negative 3.5 to 3.5. So again, what is the pattern? If we dissect it, it turns out that any even number divided by 2 minus 1 half gives us our maximum offset. Again, then we're going to multiply that by our step scaling factor in order to scale it properly with whatever we set for the grid offsets for the man and rectangle. All right, let's go ahead and write this logic into the column indexing function and then into the row indexing function, remembering that the row solution is the same as the column except for it's reversed. And you're also indexing the zeroth index of the array shape instead of the first index. Go ahead and display a couple different arrays and it looks like we have the column indexing working properly and as well as the row indexing working properly. Now that we know the logic works, I went ahead and consolidated the code into another function which allows us to generate these man and rectangle numpy arrays on the fly. And I also added the ability to pass a few different parameters such as which color you would like and what, what type of font size you would like. As I work through problems, I generally like to figure out the logic, and then as I figure out the logic, consolidate things into functions so that it can be called again at a later time. If you see at the bottom, we can just call the mo object ND array, and we're able to draw some arrays to the screen.